Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Positive Deposit Podcast. I am your host, Presley Nelson Jr., proud founder of Positive Deposits and the host of this show right here. I have a, another Howardite with me today, you know, the, the real HU. And um, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, she has an amazing journey. And, you know, on this podcast, we're here to transform minds and change lives because there is the can and can't serve. And so without further ado, I have Linda here to just give a brief introduction and then we're gonna get into this nice conversation about your journey. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, what's up everybody? Like he said, I'm a Howard Ike. My name is Linda Spruill. Four years ago, I had breast cancer um, and I did um, do six months of radiation, seven, six months of chemo, sorry, seven weeks of radiation and I had three surgeries. Wow, wow. Where are you from, Linda? I am from Defford, New Jersey. Okay, Jersey in the house, mm -hmm. Jersey in the house. So let's get, let's get into it. So um, when and where did you find out that you, you, know, you had breast cancer? Like what, what was going on? So what happened was one morning um, while getting ready for work, I went to go take a bath. And um, when I was sitting in the tub, you know, I was just washing under my arm, just regular. Yeah. And I felt like a little knot there. And mm. at first I thought it was some soap that was like caught in some underarm <laughs> air hair. So like I got a, a washcloth and I'm like scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not that. Right. And so I pressed it and I said, oh, I said, that don't feel right. So I hurried up. I got my towel and I went out to my dad and I said, dad, do you feel something right here? Yeah. I was pointing at it and he was pressing it. He was saying, no, I said, right here, it's right here. And he was pressing and he said, no, it's just fat. And I went back to my room and I sat on the bed and I said, no, nah. something's not right. Yeah. And I, I picked up the phone right there and I called um, South Jersey Radiology to set up an appointment. Yeah, yeah. And so after you called the radiology, like did they do some tests, like what, what is that, what you call the radiology, obviously you set up the appointment, what, what was the next steps um, so, for them to um, determine that it was, you know, breast cancer? So the big thing with me was, um, at the time, I was 33 years old, oh, so wow. I called up and I was like, yeah, I want to um, schedule like a mammogram because, you know, I think something's going on, they were like, well, what's wrong, you know, because they don't want to give it to you if you're too young, and I said, no, I feel something here. And yeah. they said, okay. So I went in there and they gave me an ultrasound. And when wow. they gave me the ultrasound, everybody was like, wait a minute. Like they wouldn't let me leave. They were like, wait a minute, you gotta stay here. You gotta stay here. Um, they were like, you gotta stay and you gotta talk to the radiologist. Wow. And I remember I was sitting in the room um, laying down and I was waiting for a while. And the radiation. Isn't, isn't, that stress, isn't that stressful? Just yeah. like, you're, like, you're like, whoa, y'all telling me that I have to, to, to pause for a little bit, but then I'm waiting and waiting. Yeah, and waiting. because they don't tell you why. When there's a concern, sometimes they just sit there and they don't tell you why. They're just like, uh, you can't go anywhere. You're like, well, what's up? What's going on? You know? Yeah. And yeah. They, they, they were like, because you have to talk to the radiologist. And, and at that point, I knew something was going on because like, you know, you don't, you don't ever see the radiologist when you get things done. Nah. You go there, you take the picture and you go home and the radiation yeah. tells the administration what the results are. And then someone right. else calls you. So for them to exactly. be saying, you got to stay here because the radiologist is coming specifically to talk to you. Right. That was like, oh, okay, something's up. Like something's going on. So when the doctor finally saw the scans and told you, like, what was going through your mind at that time? I remember that day. Um, because when I talked to the radiologist that night, she told me what her concerns are were. So she said, I do see something. Okay. She said, but instead of it being round, you know, it's like a splat. And that's more of an indicator going toward that it would be a cancer as opposed to a cyst. Oh so that is a concern. So she said, what we're going to do is the next step would be to get a biopsy, right. you know, get in there, get a biopsy and take a piece of it and examine it 
you know, before we say that it's really cancer. I like how you're breaking it down for those people that don't understand what a biopsy is, mm -hmm. what it's supposed to look like, you know, like, because a lot of people don't understand these terminologies, mm -hmm. you know, they be like biopsy, what is that? You know, I tell them it's like this. It's like when you go into the arcade and they got their little claw. Yes. Yep. <laughs> it's a, it's like a small little claw goes right in, mm -hmm. snatch, but at least that is catching something and they pull it and then they, you know, examine it. So I, I love that you're explaining this because a lot of people don't know about a lot of these terms. And so, yeah. They did, so they did the biopsy. Did they, were they able to determine what stage you were at at that point? Yeah. So the interesting thing with me was um, right, right after I came from the um, ultrasound, yeah. you know, just on a random, my brother called me and he was mm -hmm. like, um, Linda, I haven't talked to you in a while. How are you doing? I said, I'm okay, but I found this weird lump on my breast. Mm. He was like, I know somebody who can help you. And he oh, wow. was very close with a doctor in Philadelphia at Jefferson Hospital. And he texted her mm. and she put me on her schedule. So I shifted from South Jersey to Jefferson Hospital. Wow. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a little, it was like a weird thing. Cause like, he just called me to say hi. And it was like, then we got on this topic. And then he was like, oh no, I got somebody for you. So the doctor that he ended up hooking me up with is actually number eight in the country for cancer. Like she's a, she's a big deal. You can look her up and find her in a magazine. She ain't wow. no punk either. She a bulldog. Who, who, who so, is this doctor? Who is this Her doctor? name is Dr. Edith Mitchell. Edith Mitchell. Oh, yeah. You got, you got the best of the best. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I, I'm telling you, like, she's a bulldog. Like, she don't play no games. <laughs> like, she's so good at what she does that she doesn't even take any new patients. Mm. And that, that stuck out to me. So I said, oh, well, all your people are still alive. Okay. Yeah. You the real deal over here. Yeah. You know, so, you know, when I got her, I was like, oh, wow. Cause like, like I said, she's a force to be reckoned with. And she's got a lot of clout over there at Jefferson hospital. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually went there and they did the biopsy. Okay. And so, so once they did the biopsy and you found out what, what's at what, at, when did you have to start treatment? Like what stages they say you're, cause I know with breast cancer, the different stages. Yes. So what did you, what would they did what did they diagnose you with? What stage were you at at the time? Um. So I, I was actually on stage zero. Okay. It was stage zero. I called it very early. Early detection. Um, yeah. It was it was a little small thing like the size of a pea, um, okay. or they say a size of a marble, but it it was real little, you okay. know. And um, it was so small that like when I would go to the doctor's office, I would have to help them find it. Like it was little. Oh, wow. It was little. So it's like if you um, had bad veins, you know what I mean? You can't yeah. find it. Can't find it. <laughs> yeah, it was little. So it was stage zero. It was uh, what they call ductal carcinoma in situ. So mm. it was DCIS. For those people who, who have gone through um, breast cancer, they are familiar with that term. It means that it's in the milk duct. Nice. Um, I'm, I'm like, I'm loving how you're breaking this down because a lot of people are going to have questions. A lot of people need to understand, like, you know, you, you feel a lump. It may be small, but these are the steps you have to take. So talk yeah. to me about your treatment. You know, how was how was that first doses of chemo in your body, man? So um, you they had, gave you, me, like months, I said, they gave me pills. six months, six months of um, chemotherapy and they broke it down. The first, I want to say the first four weeks, I got adriamycin, which is what they call the red devil. Oh, the, um, ooh, the, the, the red, red devil, devil is real. Yeah. How did that make you devil. feel, that red devil? So my, I lost all my hair. Wow. Um, and for the ladies, like, just to let you know, like, um, I had, I had long hair, like, yeah. you know, I had long hair. So for me, losing my hair was a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. The first time I washed my scalp in the shower, I cried mm -hmm. um, because I felt like you took a piece of my womanhood away from me. You know, um, you know, hair, you know, breast cancer is so intimately personal to women 
because those are our pretty parts, you know, yeah. our breasts, our hair, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. that's what gives us that luster of being a woman. So it's like, when you get me in here and you say, I might want to cut one of them all for yeah. You're not going to have no hair. And every woman is different. For some woman, it's the hair. For some woman, it's the breast. Some of them were like, listen, take both of these off. I don't care. Right. You know, but for some women, it's their hair, you know? So, you know, I cried about, you know, that. But um, during my journey, I did regain my confidence. And I did, like, stop wearing the wig, stop wearing the hat. Yeah. I was just outside rocking the baldy. I got some shades on. So I'm you know, the outside of the hair loss, what, were there any other side effects? I, you know, yes. Know? Yes. Okay. So, so it's a whole big thing because their biggest concern with me was like, listen, you're so young. Yeah. And after this is over, you still got to be able to have a life after this. Yeah. So the fertility doctor was on deck, you wow. know, the, um, the, the mental health was on deck. Like they went so many different ways for it to be tailor made for me so um because of the fertility issue and the issue of being able to have children afterwards it's like whenever you give a young woman chemo um either she wouldn't have any eggs at all or yeah. the eggs that she had would be damaged so she wouldn't be able to use them yeah. you still have an ability to carry but your ability to drop an egg goes down so what they did with me was they gave me a depo lupron shot but that okay. shot sent me into medical menopause. So I was getting the hot flashes and the, oh you know, God. it's summertime. It sounds sound like the flu shot. And, you, it's like a yeah, flu like shot. You get all just, the symptoms. Yeah. Like everything was going on. Plus I got neuropathy. I still have neuropathy to this day. I have it on my hands and on my feet. So let me ask you about the neuropathy because I still deal with it now too. You know, yes. um, and it is to the point where like sometimes it cripples me yes you know? absolutely like it, and like it, it happened at work it happened at work so i was at work and it was like a little bit too cold in the building and my foot just twitched and it was like this yes it does and i just and went down same and, thing and yeah and you, there's nothing you can do but try to stretch it out but you're just crippled and it's like mm -hmm. Like it was, it, and I still deal with that now. So like, I can't arch my feet certain ways or things mm -hmm. of that nature. Otherwise, if you do, it's going to cramp up. If you do, it's going to cramp up. You got to be careful. You can, so how does that in your hands? Because I used to have it in my hands, but like, does your hands cramp up? Like how, what so, like, normally happens? My hand will get like really swollen yeah. and it'll feel like it's numb and it'll be tingling. So I'll like, like try to like massage it out. Yeah, And like that, you know, it just kind of like when that happens, you can't grip anything. Wow. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to hold somebody's hand, yeah. if you're trying to, if you're trying to touch anything, it's going to be a delay. If you're trying to grip the steering wheel on the car, or if you're trying to pick up anything for like a couple minutes, you're not going to be able to touch anything with your hands, like yeah. at all. So right now you still are dealing with like the neuropathy in yes. your hands and your feet. And my uh, feet, both. Do, does it happen frequently? Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to hold you. Like my neuropathy is bad. Like yeah. it, it is bad. Like I thought it I was just... the only one, man. I really thought I was the only one. It, it, it just, and the thing is like, you don't know when it's going to come. It just comes and it's just like, all right, wait a minute. I got to, I got to yeah. get, I got to get myself together. Right. You gotta got to prepare yourself mentally. Yeah. Like, like, it's like, you know, I got all these things going on. And then yeah. especially like if somebody's there when it happens and they like, don't then they be looking at you like, what, what are you, you be doing? like, I'll just, explain. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Just give, give me a it, minute. Yeah. And it's like, there's nothing they can really do to mm -mm. assist you because like it man unless they want to rub my hands and my feet for me right <laughs> you know <laughs> unless they want to do it you know but i gotta get through this right yeah. now you know right now what were some of the side effects of radiation i know that you you know oh yes radiation so um basically what but radiation we, but but linda before you go into that what caused the surgeries? Was the surgeries before? Oh, the so I yeah. had one for my port to put okay. my port in. Yeah. Um, that was I still have an ugly scar. I don't know if you can see it. It's right yeah. there. Mine's so right that there. was to put my port in. 
Yeah. Then I had the lumpectomy. So they went in. Um, I have some scars like underneath my breast here. Okay. Um, they went in, they took out the tumor and they also took out tissue around it. Wow. So they they took, you know, a, a big ball from yeah. me and they took that out and then they stitched me up. I do still have a clip in here that's okay. going to be in here for the rest of my life. Okay. Um, and then the other surgery that doesn't prevent was you from, like going through the metal detector, does it? It doesn't, but I tell them because I know they can see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like they'll ask, like, is there anything we need to know about? I'm like, yeah, I got a clip right here. I, I had right surgery. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they will be able to see it. Okay. And then um then they did the other one to take my port out. So it was yeah. like a total of three. Three. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so radiation, talk to us about radiation. Like how how was that side effects? Was it different from losing your hair and? Yes. Okay. It was different. And also with chemo, you know, there's lots of side effects. Um, the black fingernails. Oh yeah. I yeah. didn't get, yeah, I got the black fingernails. Yeah. I got the black fingernails. Um, I, I did get the brittle fingernails. What's, what's, so once so they started brittle? growing back, they started breaking. Oh, wow. They split down the middle and they would break. They would get to a certain level split down the middle and then they would break so wow. i also had that um my eyebrows all my hair was out like my yeah. eyebrows my eyelashes yeah. um yeah. i didn't get anything with like my teeth or anything because okay. during my treatment they sent me to the dentist okay so that was also a part of my treatment the dentist and the the cancer doctors was working together with me okay. What is um, so, so? What is it? Does it was it deteriorating your teeth? Like why? Why did you have to you know have the dentist and the you know your oncologist work together? So what happens with um with cancer and with you know diseases and everything is all the systems are connected. Yeah. So plaque attaches um, you know it goes in the air and it sticks and it would go to your mouth like diseases attach to plaque. Yeah. Then they would go in your mouth and they will make you sick. So right. as a preventative medicine to keep you from getting sick, because you know a lot of people get fevers and stuff during cancer, yep, exactly. that's how they keep you well. Well, that's how my doctors kept me well. I never got those fevers. Those fevers where your, your temperature goes up and because they yeah. have to adjust the medicine, I never got that. And the preventative medicine that they used was cleaning my teeth. Oh, so wow. once they kept the teeth clean, that kept any infection from going in my body and they still have me on that today. I still wow. have to go every How four months to get my teeth cleaned. Oh, four four months. months. So every four months I have to go get my teeth cleaned to keep anything from happening with me. Wow. So, so a lot of a lot of cancer patients don't know that. A lot of cancer doctors. I didn't don't know that. Them. I didn't know that. I really yeah, they don't they don't do that. It's an extra step that they don't take. I, I there's been so many women that I've known that are survivors, and I say, You go to the dentist, they're like, No, why would you tell me that? It's like, yeah, it's real. You got to go to the dentist. You know, you got to keep it because... Depending on your treatment, some people know certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it. Because like when I tell people what my doctor does to me, their eyes are this big. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like, what? They yeah. told me to see you next year. I'm like, I wish. I got to go to her every three months and I'm four months out, uh, four years out. And Let I'm still on every three so months check. That makes me think like how is import how important is it to make sure you get the right doctor you know or you know that uh, it's it's a matter of life and death mm. it's a matter of life and death like you know when i hear stories about things that people that happen to people yeah. when you start peeling back the layers yeah. And you start asking questions. Well, did you ever do this? Or did you right. ever do here? Did you you see the differences in how doctors treat people? You see, yeah. you see it. And like just with like what I'm telling you with the dentist, so many people tell me that they don't go. And my doctor that. is saying, Oh, you better not only does not only do I go, everything that my dentist does, she sends it to the cancer doctor. Like they can pull wow. it up on the screen and see all of it. Like they are, they are connected. Like but that's because Dr. Mitchell, she demands it. Like she called up my dentist and was like, um, you can't do anything to her without talking to me first. See, and see, that's the, that's, that's, that's the intricacies and the detail and thoroughness of Dr. Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Dr. Mitchell for even the after, the post-treatment, making sure that she is a dedicated 
doctor to you. Like you're for yes. that's customer service to the T. That yes, is it is service to the T. And and um, yeah, shout out to Dr. Mitchell, man. She she, yeah, she I want to meet her. Shoot, she's like, on I, point. <laughs> like every every single doctor in Jefferson that like even does anything with me, they'll like call her like, oh, Dr. Mitchell, Linda was here, and this is what happened. Okay, I didn't do anything else. I'm sorry, bye. Like, right, they will, right, like, call right. her immediately. Like, and sometimes she calls them before I go there. So um, briefly, what is, what is, how did radiation affect your body? Like what, what were those side effects when it came to radiation? Um, so radiation is like being in the oven. It's like okay. being in a big oven. So basically what it does is it kind of like bakes your body at the cancer site, wherever it was. Mm. Um, so they would put me in this machine and it would do what I said. They, they actually have tattoos on me because they mapped, they measured it. They measured where the tumor was and yeah. the point of reference of where they wanted me to be radiated. Right. So every time they had, they have like this little dots, they're, they're tattoos, but they're little dots that they put in my skin. And yeah. then the radiation tech would put tape on them and the light would measure up with the tape. And that's oh, how wow. they would know where to radiate me at. Um, wow. So basically what happens is that machine like cooked to my breast. Mm. So because of that during radiation, I had a lot of skin underneath the breast that would sting and it was peeling um, because, you know, they were burning my skin. So it was separating, it was stretching, yeah. it was doing all that kind of stuff. So they had to constantly have me in the intimate shop getting certain type of bras for certain type of things. Mm. So I had chemo bras and I had radiation, radiation bras. bras. So because I was irritated in these areas. Wow. So these bras are specially made for women that are going through this process. Are they expensive? And no, the insurance pays for them. You does know, every, but does, do you have to have that? You have to have insurance. good insurance. Every it, insurance it, does not pay for it. it. That's important. That's important. But I was I was blessed. My insurance gives me six bras every year for the rest of my life. So so who's your insurance carrier? It's Aetna. Aetna, okay. All but right. I've heard well, some. I hear that, right? They don't make do sure it. you have good insurance, especially Aetna. Yeah. Given six bras, you know. Every year you every get year. six bras. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's what they did. You know, they would line it up. They would do the whole thing. And I had seven weeks of it. Um, because of that, the pigment of my breasts, it's darker mm. than the other one. And um, radiation does something to the tissue. It modifies okay. it. Wow. So this breast will get very, very tight, like a rock. And I'll have to go to a massage therapist to yeah. massage that out every okay. so often. You know, oh, wow. so this breast kind of like sits up. It's kind of like real perky and it's more perky than this one because the radiation, that's the effects of it. That's what it does to the actual tissue, the actual breast tissue. So. Wow. Okay. Let me, let's, let's switch gears, right? How was the, your family support? You know, what, what was that like? Um, was your family very involved? Um, or did you, you know, how was the support of, of your village? Um, I had a lot of support, but one thing I will tell you is this, when you go through a situation like this, they tell you that the people that you think are going to be there are not mm -hmm. going to be there. And the people mm -hmm. that you don't think are going to be there are right. going to be right there. How true and is it's that for absolutely you? 100% the truth. Ooh. Now, I had a lot of support. Yeah. I had a lot. Um, number one, from my dad, I'm a daddy's girl, big time. So okay. he was right there, you know, he was in the bra shop right with me, like looking around, like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, but um, I'm here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he was like feeling real weird. I, he was just yeah. like, him and my brother would be in there. Right. Cause I have five brothers. So they'd be like, oh, wow. You know okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> but, are, you, are you the youngest? I, I have a little brother, but there's seven of us. I'm six out okay. of seven. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they, I had a lot of support. Um, and it was great. I got uh, free food mailed to my house every Wednesday from a program called MANA. Um, Manna I got okay. the six bras. Um, I got to go on a retreat in North Jersey for a weekend in a, in a, ho a hotel that was fabulous. That was all expense paid. Nice. Um, 
I got a grant from Living Beyond Breast Cancer. Um, I got a couple of grants. Um, that that wow. was through my social worker at Jefferson. She hooked that up. Um, and I got one from Living Beyond Breast Cancer. I got the Breast Cancer Coalition in South Jersey. There were a bunch of people she got for yeah, me you had, you that had gave a really me money. Village. You had a strong yeah. Village yeah, I got an iPad. Um, I got now you just uh, bragging. All right, now you just <laughs> now no, you no just... <laughs> because that, no, the reason why I say it is because there's so many people that go through this and they don't know the resources are available because they mm. don't have a social worker. Mm. So no one's there to tell them, like, listen, you don't got to worry about cooking nothing. I got somebody to come to the house every Wednesday and drop off food. You don't have wow. to clean your house. I have somebody from this program over here who will come help you clean it. You so don't have to worry about you rides connected? to your treatment. Yeah. How'd you get connected with the social work? Because that's very important to know that. Um, and I'll say you be, you're one of the first guests that even mentioned that, that have, you can actually have a social worker to help you through survivorship. And so yes. this. Was that through Dr. Mitchell or was that? Yes, Jefferson. The first day I went there, they had the team. They had the team. They got the, they got the triage nurse. They got the nurse practitioner. It was Dr. Mitchell. I have a social worker. I had a dietitian. Like they, they got the team. (laughs) That's what I'm trying to tell you. They got the team here. So my social worker, she had it hooked up. And That's like, amazing. I would send her emails of like, oh, there's this program I want to apply for it. And she would just do it. She would get my information. She would put it all in. We would apply for it. And, you yeah. know, um, and the book bag, if anybody's on here watching me, please, because that book bag, um, I, I don't have, I can't think of the name of it, but okay. in this book bag, there, there's this family that their daughter had ovarian cancer. Yeah. Unfortunately, she passed away, but they started a community service organization where they give out these book bags for free. In this book bag is a whole bunch of stuff that will help you through your treatment. Wow. One of them is those queasy pops. You ever heard of them? No, nah, queasy pops? What is from the nausea? So, during treatment, we okay. get them stomach aches and they're lollipops. The wow. lollipops that you eat that stop the stomach ache. Please. Because you know, our taste buds are all weird during oh, treatment oh. and everything. Oh, oh. And though, not only do those lollipops help that, but they help, you know, cause like your tongue be dry and all different type of stuff. They got these gloves in there to put on your hands and your feet for the neuropathy. Um, oh, they've got all messy. types of stuff in this bag to just help you with the side effects and it's help like you with the, everything. The, the ultimate survival kit for your chemo treatments. It is. And like, that's why I like to tell people you need to email them because they, all you got to do is tell them what you got and they will send you the bag and the bag worked wonders. I'm telling you, um, even with the crossword puzzles, cause you know how we lose our memory. Mm. So they have a crossword puzzle book in there. Um, for you to do crossword puzzles to get your memory back. Cause I got that too. My memory was like, people's names was different. And like, oh, wow. I couldn't figure it out. Like people, only the first letter was right on people's names. Wow. And wow. so I went through wow. a whole thing where it was like, I was going on the app and I was like, basically like trying to get my memory back. Cause what they tell you is your brain is a muscle just like anything else. Yeah. So you yeah. have to exercise it. So you got to do these crossword puzzles and you got to go on this app to try to get your memory back. And I deal with it a little bit, a little bit now. I'll see that I forget stuff, but not to the extent was before. Because they told me, they said, people will look familiar. You'll know that you know them, but you won't be able, you don't know their name. And it was exactly like that. I'd be like, wait a minute, I've known her for years. Right. Just like it's blank. What was the hardest part of your your, your journey, man? You know, I, I... you know, you, you've been blessed with the team, you, but what was those, what was one of the, the darkest, like a, a, a hard place in your journey, you know, um, that you had to overcome? Um, well, making the decision to get chemo and I'll tell you the story. Yeah. So my cancer was so small that, um, I had a choice, right? Mm-hmm. And so, the, you know, I'm 33 years old. I've never had health problems. Right. It's hard, you know? And so basically what happened is when they went to do my biopsy, when you do, when you have breast cancer, they do two different ones. Okay. So there's also a sentinel lymph node biopsy because what'll happen is 
because of the lymphatic drainage, it flows here. It will carry something into your lymph nodes, which is under your arm. Because okay. women, we got so much secretion in here, right? Because right, right. we make milk here. So exactly. there has to be fluid, right? Right. So they also test your lymph nodes to see if they're involved in the cancer. Because sometimes yeah. those lymph nodes will have cancer in them too. So they, even though they take out the lump, they got to check you up under here too. Wow. So they went in, they did mine. And what they do is they put a blue dye in you. Okay. If there's cancer in your lymph node, the blue dye will go to it and it'll let the doctor know. Wow. When they put the blue dye in me, it just spread all over the place. It wow. didn't go to one. And so they came back and they were like, okay, this is the deal. Something could have went somewhere microscopically. Right. But we won't be able to see it. A right, piece right. could have broken off and it could have went somewhere. Um, because of the early stage, I could have just said, no, I'm not doing it, blase, blase. But the doctors yeah. were like, listen, this is the only way that we'll know for sure that we got everything. So what was the deciding factor for you? How did you, how did you mentally, did you pray? Did you, what, 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 what switch turned on and say, hey, I need to get this treatment? So everybody was saying everything. And now the reason why I'm saying that is because your family get all in there, no this and that, and, yeah, blah, 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 yeah. and everybody's yelling at you. And you're just like, listen, I can't even do it no more. I can't take it. I prayed and I had a dream. Mm. And in the dream, an angel came down the step and they said, Linda, the doctors are telling you the truth. God was talking to you through your dreams. Wow. And that's how I knew that I had to do that. I knew wow. that that was the way for me was wow. to just get the chemo, make sure you know you got it. Don't gamble with it. It's gone and go on. Even though I was scared, losing my hair and yeah. new Lasta was terrible. Who that new Lasta? New Talk Lasta, about it. My arm, I was all sore and everything. You know, you had the patch on, and then it'd be beeping, and then you know it made oh, me man. all sore and you just brought back some memories. The new the Lasta, place. man. The new Lasta, but it, but the new Lasta is great for you because it does, you know, help. Protect it keeps you, you from, from getting sick. From getting sick, it's like a little force field. I used to yes. get it every time they was like, "You want it?" I said, "Yes." Yeah, I hated it. I'm not gonna lie, I hated New Lasta. <laughs> I hated it. It was so uncomfortable. And then you yeah. know, I'm over here with medical menopause too, so that was a oh, whole nother issue. That was a whole I got New Lasta in the arm, and I'm on menopause, so I didn't have a period the whole time this was going on. I was going wow. through some changes. <laughs> I was going through some changes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so man, um, so now you've gone through all this and now you're modeling. So let's talk about yeah. what what caused you what what steered you into the modeling? You know, was this always a dream of yours or like you know, like talk to us about that? Because I'm like you said, I'm a look at you, you should, you glowing <laughs> right now. You like, yeah. So like I've always like admired models it's always been something in the back of the he my head that I wanted to do but I didn't think I had what it takes I didn't think they would pick me okay um you know and then there was like one time when I tried out for like something with modeling years ago and they didn't yeah. pick me and I ended up like bawling crying and okay. you know I just didn't think that I have it so one of these weird things again one of my best friends, my sister, she calls me up. She's like, hey, let's um go hang out. Let's go to lunch and let's go to Ashley Stewart and, you know, like have a little girl's yeah. day or whatever. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. So I go down Philly. I meet her up there and we're shopping around in the store and we go in the dressing room. When we go in the dressing room, I stepped out to show my outfit. And when I stepped out, these crowd of women were walking by and they stopped and looked at me. And they said, excuse me, miss, you have a look. Oh. I'm, I'm here like I do. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> they're like, um, well, let me tell you who I am and what I do. Oh. Um, I'm the CEO of a company called Love In My Curves. And I'm out here to have a casting call for Philadelphia Fashion Week. What? Would you try out for me? And I said, yeah, I mean, I'm here, yeah. right? why not i'll do it wow so she said well when you're done shopping i have a little table out there come over to the table right there and come see me i said okay 
So I went over there and the runway coach came up. They said, okay, this is what you want to do. When I put my hand up, you're going to walk down there and then you're going to walk back and then that's it. And I did what she said and I got the show. I got the show and then after the show, like the ball just kept rolling. Yeah. People just kept asking me to do wow. stuff and wow. I got involved with people. It, was, it wasn't even on your radar. No, no, no. Wow. And then, and then like after that, I got prophesied to it about it at church. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like all meant to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was in my path for a reason. Dang, that's amazing. So how long you been um, modeling? So I've only been modeling for one year. I'm getting ready to hit my two-year mark in March. Um, wow. But I'm so passionate about modeling. Um, number, number one, because I want um, cancer survivors that are women to know that there's beauty after cancer. Amen. You can, you you can get it back. Yes. You can get it back. You can be beautiful again. This thing, you know, I'm handicapped because I had breast cancer and I had a second diagnosis of intracranial hypertension wow. and I have neuropathy. So it's like, so wait, I'm not wait. supposed so, to. So when you get neuropathy, you can get the handicap benefits? Oh yes, I have handicap benefits. Dang. You need to talk to me. We'll talk online because <laughs> Because I always think, I, no, and it's no, not that I think about that because I, the neuropathy, it's very freaking. We'll talk off, we'll talk offline about that. But yeah. yeah, but no, I think it's so amazing about your story because like God was in the midst of your whole journey. That, yeah, that's a game changer because they always ask you, when are you ready to start the treatment? And you had a dream and an angel said, yo, you got to do this. And you yep. are obedient to God's vision and how he spoke to you. So right. I commend you for taking that step because that's the one of the hardest steps to, to it embrace. Is. Like, I got to I gotta do chemo? Like, yeah. where is this coming from? And, and it's a choice. You're not saying, oh, you better blah, blah, blah. I had like all these choices on the table. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the hardest part for anybody because some people just go up there and they'll be like, well, cut both of my breasts off and I don't care. I'm just out of here and yeah. take my ovaries out too. And that's most of the older women. They do that. They go in there and they be like, listen, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take both of my breasts off and you're going to take my ovaries out and we're going to be done with everything. Exactly. But it's just like when you're a young woman and you're unmarried and you still got to think about, well, what if somebody come and they want to marry me later and now they want a baby? What am I going to do if I told them that I, you know, removed everything yeah. and now it can't be nothing? And they already be on you like, well, you know, sex is going to be different. You know what I'm saying? And it's just yeah. like they take you through all these classes of how to learn about <laughs> how the reproductive system and this yeah. and that and you know, it's it's yeah. a lot of choices that you have to make and you yeah. have to do what's best for you. So you need some type of guidance because you don't know what's up the road. Exactly. You don't know what's going to happen, but you know you want to yeah. be in the best position possible. Exactly. So, you know, man. This is, I talk too much and I'm sorry. No, 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 no you're good. A <laughs> it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of good gems. And so because you have so many good gems, this is the part of the show where we ask our guests to give Three, not five, but three, <laughs> three um, positive deposits. You know, on this show, we want to transform minds to change lives. And, and for those cancer survivors that are listening, those people after post-treatment are listening, and those women that are, you know, looking into being plush models, I need three positive deposits that you can, you know, share with the people listening um, in those different categories. Um. Definitely there's beauty after cancer. That's, that. that's my number one thing. I, I, I yeah. say it all the time. Um, you can get it back. Yeah. You know, just because, you know, this thing, it doesn't come in here and it doesn't rob you of everything. It doesn't get to do that. Amen. You know, you're in that. control. And, you know, I've had to do a lot of, you know, alternative care. I've yeah. had to do a lot of things, you know, you know, outside of my treatment, you know, to make sure that I did get things back that right, I did right. get my hair back, that I did get my skin back, that I did yeah. get my eyelashes back, you know, but it's just like, it, it's possible. Okay. Don't let nobody think that it's not impossible for you to be the woman that you once were because you can, Amen. you know, um, this is an addition. It's not a subtraction. Awesome. Um, my we'll thing about, my thing about the women who want to be plus size models, 
Um, one, the two things I would tell you, number one, confidence is key. Amen. No matter what you, no matter, no matter how you look, when you come down that runway or when you go to do this photo shoot or when you go to do this commercial, people see your confidence. If you don't love you, everybody's going to know. Mm. You have to come down there like you are a storm, okay? Right, right. I, listen, I'm the best looking woman you've <laughs> ever seen in your life. Hey, today. talk, talk <laughs> that then, talk. Like, that's how it, you know, <laughs> you know it, it is. It's like, it's confidence is key. Confidence is what makes everybody love you. You yeah. have to, you know, if you, if you are out there, you want to be a plus size model, number one, beauty is not a size. That's yeah. a lie. So the, what would the, be the, the media one? lied to us. Right. We'll be the last one for those that are going through the treatment and, and trying to push through. Um, if you're going through treatment and you're trying to push through there, um, you got to keep your faith. You got to keep your faith because, you know, trust God. When you, when if there was a lot of nights that I had a lot of bad dreams, yeah. a lot of nightmares a lot of night terrors and mm -hmm. um you know you know you're just scared like you just think like I'm 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 so sleepy I want to go to sleep but I don't know if I'm going to wake up again cuz the way wow. I'm feeling right now you know and nobody knows how that stuff feels nah, not you know all. people are not walking in your shoes so it's just like yeah. you you really have to grab a hold of your faith and trust God all the yeah. way you know um, that's what I had to do. I had to go to support groups. I had to talk to people who knew what I was talking about and yeah. that went through it, you know, and I had to, I had to pray and I had to just, you know, lean on God 100% because if I didn't do that, you know, you know, there were times when I was emotionally sick. Yeah. Cause I was just upset about the way I looked, the way I felt. What, what is my life going to be like after this? Right, right. You know, how am I going to be able to get along around here? You know, what if something happens? Because remember, yeah. I got intracranial hypertension in the midst of chemo, wow. you know, and that was a big deal. That's a whole nother story. And that yeah. happened bald head and all. I was in the hospital for a week. Ooh. So, you know, uh, and usually one thing I want to say, yeah. you know, is usually with cancer, unfortunately, there is a second diagnosis. So like I know girls who had it and then they got uh, osteoporosis or they had it and then they have a heart problem or something. Wow. For, for whatever wow. reason, there usually is a second diagnosis that comes along with it. And it's different for every person. So it's like, it's like double. Wow, wow. Well, Linda, man, this was this was awesome, man. I feel like I I feel like I could get another hour or two, but oh yes, easily. I know. I, I know easily. But, I got so many war stories. <laughs> it ain't even funny. Well, like, I got so many war stories. So we, we always like to, you know, allow you to drop your info. So if, if people want to find you, people want to follow you, people want to talk to you about, you know, plus plus size modeling. How, where can we find you? What where social media? Where where can we go? Where can they so, go? My Instagram handle is Divine Curves. So it's spelled with a Y. So it's D I V Y N E Curves. Okay. Um, and Facebook is just my name, Linda Sproul. My last name is S P R U I L L. Wow. Well, so you heard it Divine with a Y. Curves. Divine <laughs> curves. And Linda, These curves came from the Lord. <laughs> from the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and on Facebook, <laughs> Linda Sproul. And so that's where you can find her. And, you know, we thank you guys for tuning in. This is the Positive Deposit Podcast. We're on all streaming platforms, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. And you'll be able to see this live interview, this amazing interview on our YouTube channel. And so um, if you haven't, go to the website, www.positivedeposit.org. And once again, We've transformed minds to change lives. Thank you, Linda, so much for coming on the show.